very good evening and welcome to State of Business on our television. I'm Ashing Sunny Veda Singh. Let's have a look at the headlines for today. IMF commends Sri Lanka's commitment on fiscal discipline and institutional reforms. Disabled war soldiers continue the protest despite cabinet approval. News in detail. Minister of Ports, Shipping and Southern Development Sagla Ratnayaka states that the port industry is striving to fulfill its environmental responsibility even though it is crucial. Minister made these observations today addressing the Maritime and Supply Chain International Conference in Colombo. As the entire world is mired in the effects of climate change, our industry will have to go to extraordinary lengths to fulfill our environmental responsibilities and obligations. This transformation may not be a cakewalk by any means. On January 1st, some 60,000 ocean-going vessels will have to cut their sulfur emissions by more than 80%. The first in a series of steps the global maritime industry will take on in the coming years. This, needless to say, will push carriers into uncharted waters in terms of operating costs and fundamental questions including what will power the vessels of the future. There are also concerns from the shipping customers as to who and how, who will bear the costs or how the costs will be shared across the supply chains. These are questions to which we must find the answers to. International Monetary Fund says that the Sri Lankan authorities are taking steps to complete all the pending actions and structural benchmarks for the sixth review of Sri Lanka's extended fund facility over the next few weeks. A staff team from the IMF led by Manuela Gurathi visited Colombo during September 10th to 25th to conduct the sixth review and they had reached understandings at the staff level with the Sri Lankan authorities. IMF publishing an article in its official website yesterday said that they welcome the authorities' commitment to fiscal discipline and institutional reforms to anchor debt sustainability while providing space to support the ongoing recovery and social goals. The mission supported the Central Bank of Sri Lanka prudent and data-dependent monetary policy approach and their renewed commitment to strengthen reserve buffers in line with program understandings. They also suggested the CBSL should continue to allow for exchange rate flexibility and limit forex intervention to smooth excess volatility in the event pressures from tighter global financial conditions were to intensify. It also said that the new Central Bank Act will be a landmark reform in the roadmap towards flexible inflation targeting, strengthening the Central Bank of Sri Lanka's mandate, governance, accountability and transparency in line with international best practice. Further, the IMF said that trade and investment liberalization, SOE reforms and stepped-up anti-corruption efforts will be important to bolster Sri Lanka's competitiveness and medium-term growth. Issues related to salaries and allowances of the disabled war veterans were making headlines over the past few days. Thus, cabinet approval has been granted to pay disabled war veterans the salaries and allowances they received at the time of retirement for life, the finance minister stated last evening. However, the protest campaign launched by the disabled war veterans still continues as all of their demands are not fully met by the government. The Finance Ministry announced yesterday that the Cabinet approval has been granted to pay disabled war veterans the salaries and allowances they received at the time of retirement for life and that this would be applicable to disabled Tri-Forces personnel, police and STF with effect from yesterday. Thus, as an example, an army major receives a basic salary and other allowances amounting to 97,205 rupees and in addition, they receive a service pension of 10,000 rupees and disabled pension of 4,000 rupees with the total remuneration amounting to 111,483 rupees. Prior to this cabinet approval, when such an officer retired after the age of 55, the pension was 81,000 rupees. But the protesters claim that all their requirements are not yet fulfilled and they ask what will happen to the dependents of the disabled war heroes when they are deceased and point out that the current allowances given to the dependents of the disabled war heroes is less than 50%. But the thing is, those who died in the battlefield, 
So their wives, their kids and kids only get less than 50% at the age of 55 of the, the person who died in the battlefield. And the parents also, they don't get. And we have a, another question, that is, just imagine one soldier lost his two legs in the battlefields when he reaches only five years service. So after 12 years, he can retire. So he will get till 55 pay and pension, then because of the yesterday's solution given, till his last breath. So if he die, the pay and pension given to him will be stopped and only widow and orphanage payments will be given to the wife. A new train, Dakshina Nagarantara Sigrugami, from Maradana to Belyatta, was flagged off yesterday under the patronage of Minister of Transport and Civil Aviation of Sri Lanka, Arjuna Ranatunga, and the High Commissioner of India, Taranjit Singh Sandhu. Dakshina Nagarantara Sigrugami is made in India and supplied by MNS Rights Limited under Indian Line of Credit to Sri Lanka Railways. The train has best-in-class passenger amenities and will offer both comfort and speed to passengers, reflecting a next level of travel experience. The train has onboard infotainment system with GPS-based passenger information system and air-conditioned chair cars have 360-degree rotating seats with glass bottom aluminium extruded modular luggage racks. This newly flagged off train will commence a journey from Beli Atta at 2.15 am reaching Maradana at 5.10 am and it will leave Maradana at 3 pm and will arrive at Beli Atta at 6.05 pm. Accordingly, Minister and High Commissioner also travelled from Maradana to Fort Railway Station by the new train yesterday. Stay tuned for more news after this short break. Welcome back after the break. The Monterey Board of the Central Bank decides to order the licensed banks to reduce interest rates applicable on all rupee-dominated loans and advances by at least 200 basis points by the 15th of October this year. Central Bank announced that Sri Lanka's real lending rates are unacceptably high compared to its peer economies and are not consistent either with the low inflation regime experienced by the country over the past 10 years and the expectations of 4-6% to level of inflation envisaged under the proposed flexible inflation targeting framework. The Monetary Board of the Central Bank decided to order the licensed banks under subsection 1B of section 104 of the Monetary Law Act to reduce interest rates applicable on all rupee-denominated loans and advances by at least 200 basis points by the 15th of October in comparison to the interest rates applicable as at the 30th of April this year subject to certain exclusions. With effect from the 1st of November 2019, in the case of credit card advances, the maximum interest rate applicable will be 28% per annum, while in the case of pre-arranged temporary overdrafts, the maximum interest rates applicable will be 24% per annum. Penal interest rates added to loans and advances have been capped at 400 basis points per annum for the amount in excess of an approved limit or in appears during the overdue period with effect from from the 15th of October. Accordingly, each LCB is also expected to reduce its average weight prime lending rate by 250 basis points by the 27th December compared to its AWPR as published by the Central Bank as at the 26th of April. The central bank will continue to closely monitor the movements in market lending rates to ensure a more effective transmission of monetary policy through the financial system. Premier Consumer Products retailer Singer was officially announced as the commercial distributor for Dell Technologies at a launch which held last week in Colombo. The event witnessed the presence of Singer's iron-white partners which highlighted Singer's strength in the channel business. Thus, Singer will continue its partnership with Dell as a large format retailer and distributor for consumer products which earned it the highly sought-after best consumer distributor for year 2018 and year 2019 at the Dell Technologies Partner Awards. Singer is the first to introduce Dell's ninth generation desktops to Sri Lanka and with this newly established partnership, Singer will be distributing Dell's latest products from notebooks to desktops and other commercial items. 
speaking at the event, Dell Technologies country manager Krishan Fernando highlighted how this partnership will help to leapfrog digital literacy in Sri Lanka. We are at the start of a new era, the era of data, the era of data going into digital. In that era, especially in Sri Lanka, we will leapfrog and we will have great success. Dell, both in my office, the Dell Sri Lanka office, as well as our region, looks at the Sri Lankan market as one of the key markets in South Asia. And we are really getting ready for all the success that is to come. Let Singer win, let Dell win, and let you, our partners, win. But not at the expense of our customer. Singer, as well as Dell, we are more than committed to make sure that while our three parties win together, our customer wins with good service and professional handling of that customer needs. Western province continued to account for the largest share as per the provincial gross domestic product estimated by the Statistics Department of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka for 2018. Central and Northwestern provinces were the second and the third highest contributors for the PGDP respectively. Central Bank today announced that the highest increase in PGDP share on year-on-year -year basis was reported in Western province. The only other province that reported an increase was the North Central province while the shares of Central, Sabiragamo and Old provinces decreased in 2018. The shares of northwestern, southern, eastern and northern provinces, however, remained unchanged. Services activities played a dominant role in all provinces with a contribution of more than 50% to the PGDP. Transportation, wholesale and retail trade and other personal services activities were the key drivers of provincial services activities which were in line with the trends observed in national GDP. The contribution from industry activities to PGDP varied from 16.2% in North Central Province to 32.8% in Western Province. Construction, manufacture of food, beverages and tobacco products, manufacture of textiles, wearing apparel and leather-related products, and mining and quarrying were the main contributors in most of the provinces. Oppo, a known mobile handsets provider, launched its A-Series 2020 in Sri Lanka last week. The Oppo A Series 2020, which includes the Oppo A9 2020 and Oppo A5 2020 handsets, is the brand's latest offering for the mid-level smartphone market. The Oppo A9 2020 comes with a multi-purpose quad camera setup, including a 48 megapixel main camera, 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, 2 megapixel mono lens, 2 MP portrait lens, while the Oppo A5 2020 also comes with a multi-purpose quad camera setup but with a 12 megapixel main camera. A large capacity 5000mAh battery enables all day use, capable of supporting 19 hours of continuous operation. The battery is also able to handle reverse charging, freeing active, on-the-go uses from the worries of rapid battery drain. The Oppo A9 is available in marine green or space purple, priced at 59,990 rupees, while the Oppo A5 is available in mirror black or dazzling white, priced at 44,990 rupees. Stay tuned for stock updates after this short break. Welcome back after the break. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a mixed note today. The all-share price index gained 18.86 points to close at 5,762.4 and the S&P SL20 dropped 5.53 points to close at 2,741.39. The turnover was 221 million rupees and over 19 million shares were traded. Up next are Forex rates. That's all the news for today. Join us tomorrow at the same time. Until then, take care. Good night.